Example three has implied grouping symbols. It's a quotient, a bunch of stuff divided by a bunch of stuff. And we got some parentheses in it already, but you have to imply that the entire numerator is grouped in, in some type of a grouping symbol. I have to evaluate the entire numerator down to a single number. The same with the denominator. The entire denominator has to be evaluated down to a single number. My goal is to get some number on top divided by some number on bottom and then reduce that fraction as much as possible. That's what I want to do with a problem like this. What I personally do with this problem is I take the top and bottom as separate problems. So the top is 5 parentheses plus 7 parentheses plus 2. Okay, in the parentheses, I want to evaluate this stuff. What's negative 5 plus 3? Negative 2. Negative 2. Why did you subtract, Mitchell? Because uh, negative 5 is greater than 3. Not, well, that's why it's negative. But subtract because the signs are different. So different signs tell me subtract. 5 is bigger, so it's negative. Uh, Parker, what would negative 5 plus 9 be? What kind of form? Why did you subtract? Because 9 is bigger than 5. That's why it's positive. It's negative. It's subtract because the signs are different. Okay, so again, when you make that decision, should I add or subtract? Signs are different as subtract. Signs are the same as add. And the bigger number determines the sign of the answer each time. If I continue on, I've got a multiplication, a multiplication, and an addition. 5 and negative 2 makes negative 10. 7 times 4 is 28. And plus 2 is still plus 2. Altogether, 30 minus 10 is equal to 20. So my top number is positive 20. The next thing I would do is I evaluate the bottom. So I've got the bottom, I've got a parentheses, plus 3, plus 5. In the parentheses, 4 minus 2 is equal to? 2. 2. reason that equals 2 is because back in second grade when you learned how to subtract, 4 minus 2 equals 2. It still does. All right. Sometimes they're just that easy. All right. 2 plus 3 plus 5 adds up to 10. So 10 goes on the bottom. So I evaluate the top, I evaluate the bottom. 2 over 1. And 20 divided by 10 divides to 2 over 1, or just 2. If you get a whole number, go ahead and write it as a whole number. If you want to put it over 1, that's fine. If it, all it does is reduce, reduce it. If it's 10 over 20, that's a half. You know, so just make sure that you, know, you reduce the fraction properly. If it ends up being a fraction, that's fine. It doesn't have to be, though.